Look, I think uh, what happens with um, um, you know these events, uh, and if you look at what's happened over the last, I would say, 12 months or so, um, the financial health of the industry is, uh, has deteriorated, and uh, and I think with 10, 11 players sitting in the market, that's an unsustainable situation for the amount of investments that the industry needs. Uh, we have entered into a, a, a agreement with Telenor, uh, so that's one, uh, you know, hopefully with the regulatory approvals, that would be one less competitor. Um, Aircel and Arcom have entered into some kind of an agreement, and the big one, Vodafone and IDA have also entered into an agreement, or potential agreement. So I think what you will be left with in the course of the next maybe 12 to 15 months is perhaps four to five operators. I think that is a very good thing for the industry because the extent of investments that are required to develop India's broadband infrastructure needs a lot of financial scale. And so I would say uh, it's actually a, a healthy, healthy development for the industry as a whole. But you know, if you look at it, Vodafone Idea is going to be a formidable player in terms of size, scale, uh, also you know capacity uh, savings, uh, OPEX savings. It will actually be a very formidable player. So, from Bharti Airtel's point of view, will that mean more investments into network going forward? Will that mean more focus into getting more spectrum? Uh, you know, help us understand. Obviously, there has to be a game plan uh, for Bharti Airtel as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've always said that you know our obsession is not with our competitors but our customers. Right, and uh, and I think um, you know every competitor is formidable. Uh, every competitor must be respected. But finally, we're here to serve customers. So, in my view, our job is cut out, which is to make sure that our broadband investments are well directed, our network quality is dramatically improved, our customer experience is you know constantly improved, and we we struggle with that every day to try and improve that. And I think that's really what our obsession is. So, to stay focused on the market, on our customers, and make sure that we. We give them the service and the experience that they deserve. Will that mean more uh, investments in network? Because you know the market is really uh, eyeing this merger from a twofold perspective. One, of course, is that it will lead to consolidation. But secondly, and more importantly, Bharti is the number one player in the market right now. But it will have very stiff competition from this uh, joint uh, uh, entity, which of course will be the largest player in the market. So, will Bharti put in more money in, in the network? Will it also look at more uh, 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 M&A? Telenor is one bit, but will it mean more M&A for Bharti? So we we have already you know two years ago, Gauri, we we uh, announced a big uh, investment program called Project Leap, which was a ten billion dollar investment. We are sort of halfway through that, um, or maybe sixty percent done. In fact, if you look at the last two years, uh, we have rolled out something like one hundred and sixty thousand base stations. Now, to, just to give you a measure measure of that investment, that is like redrawing the entire Airtel network all over again. So what we did in twenty years, we literally did in two years. So the network investments were already part and you know halfway through or maybe 60% through that journey. So the investments in network will continue as we continue to experience uh, you know broadband growth and, and more importantly as we sort of drive the broadband infrastructure across the country. Having said that, I think every competitor is uh, is respected. I mean we have seen uh, you know the extent of competition in the industry is brutal over the last 20, 25 years. Uh, we are used to it, so we, you know we are products of competition. So you know that doesn't phase us. Okay, fair enough. Let's move away from Vodafone idea. Talk about Telenor. That's uh, that's a deal. Uh, a lot of people say it was a very sweetheart deal for Bharti Airtel. No extra payout, getting just uh, uh, you know the spectrum liabilities that need to be paid over a period of time. Uh, how soon will that complete? And more importantly, how does that uh, uh, you know bolster Bharti's uh, uh, spectrum for? Um, so I think what uh, you know currently we have we have applied for uh, for regulatory approvals. Uh, there are also a whole host of clearances and approvals that need to be sought before the uh, the merger is kind of signed. We've just signed a definitive agreement. Uh, what the the acquisition gives us is a spectrum in seven circles uh, in the 1800 band. Uh, this improves our footprint uh, dramatically. Uh, it's not that we didn't have spectrum here, it just gives us an extra carrier of spectrum, which is very, very useful because what happens is when you put two carriers of 1800 band together, you get a lot more capacity. It's not one plus one equals two, but one plus one is much more than two. Uh, and so that is a huge advantage. We also uh, get access to about a 50 million customers of, uh, of Telenor, uh, which we will you know, work to, uh, to try and integrate and, and provide the same experience and service that uh, the Airtel customers get. Now let me just talk about you know the tariffs and how margins and pricing in the sector are immensely under pressure. Following Relgio's plans, Bharti did come out with its own set of equally compelling plans. Uh, 
in your assessment is now the future going to be free voice is it going to be free roaming free voice uh, and is it just going to be only data where telcos in india have to make money i think uh, so we have been you know we have killed domestic roaming yeah. uh, we made a recent announcement in fact our chairman made an announcement on international roaming as well yeah. Uh, we've killed domestic roaming, um, uh, and so in a way, India is one now. Yeah. For, you know, from on our network, and our customers can experience it uh, wherever they go. Um, we will continue to, um, you know, uh, look at uh, look at pricing as a lever. I think pricing, you know, unfortunately, with pricing, if it comes down, it's very difficult to get it back up. Uh, so yes, it is a very, very uh, unsustainable level of pricing that we are at right now. Uh, the good news is that we have capacities and we can continue to serve customers. Our experience is fantastic. We were very proud recently to have been declared India's fastest network by a, a third party independent assessment done on the basis of speed tests across the country. But do you think that now pricing is only going to go down? Because as you said, there's no way tariffs can come back to a, a more sustainable level anytime in the future with RELGIO also you know, using the same price lever. I think let's, let's wait and watch. Uh, I think, uh, you know, if pricing comes down, I think the financial situation of most uh, most companies will deteriorate. Everybody is here to finally make a return because it's important, you know, why do you want to make a return? I mean, remember, you know, as an industry, this is an industry that makes a return of 1% or less than 1%. Uh, now, if you put your capital into a savings bank account, you'll get more than 1%, right? So, uh, this is an unsustainable level of return. And the job to be done over the next few years is massive because there's a massive amount of investment to be made. So I do believe that the industry needs to be financially sustainable in order to make those investments. And pricing is an important determinant of that sustainability. Having said that, we are a competitive operator. And you know, for us, market share is important. Uh, so we do, we do have premiums over many players. We've seen a lot of competition with, with deep tariffs over the past years. Uh, we have tended to play that game as, as well as we could. And I, we'll continue to do that. But I do believe the longer, the bigger point is that the consolid imminent consolidation in the industry is a good thing to improve the financial health of the sector. I have two final questions for you. One is that from 1st of April, Relgio will start charging commercial tariffs. Obviously, it's great news for you. But does that mean that uh, we can expect another round of price cuts uh, uh, from Bharti as well, you know, to ensure that uh, they're equally compelling to uh, Relgio? And uh, the second question I want to ask is that Relgio has touched 100 million. It is now looking to be a very formidable player as well in the market. Uh, in your sense, uh, going forward, do you think that the next set of uh, uh, competition really is going to be on 4G, given the fact that Relgio is targeting 4G and data space primarily? So firstly, I think we respect uh, Reliance uh, Industries. They're a, you know, a, a great uh, company. They, they've done uh, you know, a phenomenal job in terms of rolling out uh, the infrastructure across the country. So I think that is uh, you know, something to be looked at with some degree of admiration. Uh, I think, we, like I said, I think our job is simple to serve our customers better. And uh, we will continue to be competitive in the marketplace. We will make sure that uh, you know, we're rolling out our infrastructure, our broadband investments. I don't believe that this market will all be 4G in a hurry. Uh, you, know, you do need, uh, there are different kinds of Indias. There are different Indias today. There are people who will uh, you know, give you just 40 to 50 rupees ARPU. There are people who will give you 2,000 or 5,000 rupees ARPU. Our job is to serve all of them, all of these Indias simultaneously. Uh, we cover, we cover about, uh, so just to finish off my point, we cover 500,000 uh, villages, uh, we cover every single town and we do it through a combination of 2G, 3G and 4G. Over time, some of the spectrum will get refarmed towards 4G. All of it will not happen tomorrow morning, but it will happen over a period of time and our spectrum position is strong for us to be able to refarm the spectrum in order to make sure that we are serving our customers. One of the good things in this industry is that a lot of the investment is modular. As the traffic builds, you can keep investing. And that's, that is you know, a, a, a situation where you can turn a base station on with a different band of spectrum and reform it. And I think that's really what we feel is, uh, is, is our strength. And how will you protect your market share? Well, you, you, I, you, know, you have to uh, look at our 20-year 20, 20 history to see you know, what we've done. Uh, we've been through many battles. Um, we've had many bruises and scars on our backs. Uh, but at the end of the day, what gives us uh, a lot of fulfillment is the fact that we serve our customers and we are, uh, you know, we do a good job of that. So we're not so obsessed by anything other than that. And are you finally disappointed with the fact that uh, no decision was taken uh, at the TDSAT level, uh, at, you know, as far as the Relgio freebies are concerned? There is, of course, the CCI case that is still pending. Uh, but for all practical purposes, we are on the 17th of March, 31st of March is when the freebies end. Uh, uh, and the regulatory procedure has pretty much not uh, been uh, supporting the incumbents. 
I think let's wait and see. I think it's still sub judice because you know it's not the final order. So um, we'll we'll wait and watch. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash et now and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at et now live. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash et now.